Okay, so Pi News episode 23 and my favorite operating system on the Pi, which is Twister OS, which is what this is, has just had an update. So if you go over to the main page for Twister OS, it actually shows up and tells you that there's an update anyway. But if we go to downloads, click on Raspberry Pi 4, scroll down, and you can see version 2.0.1 has just come out. And we've got transition to Twister OS light base image. Removed Chromium Media Edition, added native Widevine support. This is something that happened to Twister Lite. Uh, when Twister Lite came out, it already had this done. Uh, so we used to have to use things like Netflix and Spotify in a separate Chromium browser, and the performance wasn't as good. Now we've got proper Widevine support that's been added to Twister OS as standard, which is excellent. Remove Midnight Commander. Relocated consolidated Steam components, improved Steam Box 86 compatibility, which is great. Cleaned up menu shortcuts, updated Discord app, updated Box 86, updated Twister 95 and Twister XP login and splash screens, updated Twister 10 theme icons, updated Pi apps, Box 86 uninstall script, and updated README. And uh, the Box 86 is something I need to try again uh, because it keeps getting improved and uh, I haven't visited it for a while, so I'll be looking at that in the future. And so the way it updates, uh, if you haven't already updated it, uh, it usually comes up with a little pop-up, a bit like Pi Apps, to tell you there's an update available. But if you just go to, uh, I think it's called Patcher on here, yeah, if you type in PAT, uh, Twister OS Patcher, and that will check if you've got the latest version. Uh, if you haven't got the latest version, it'll offer to update it, reboot, and then it's all done, which is excellent. Next up, uh, really good news, Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit has had uh, another update. Thanks to Gus Albert for letting me know about this. Uh, there's not a lot of information which is the trouble. So you can see here, this is the original post, but this is back from 2020. Uh, but if you scroll down, uh, here are the latest images. They're in this post. So if I click on that, and uh, this is the one I clicked on to download. So you can see here, so it was the 9th of April and you're looking for the one that's the biggest size and this one is a gig. I was trying to find what the changes were to find some sort of change log or anything like that and I really couldn't find enough information on it. There is a GitHub but the GitHub doesn't have a lot of information. It has it has an issues section in it but it doesn't have a proper change log like I've just read out on Twister which tells you all the different bits and if I open it up you can see there's it's not the greatest of thing to, to have to read through and try and work out what's, what's going on. So I'll leave that. But I did notice on here, if I go to parent directory and keep going back, parent directory, you can see here that it says downloads.raspberrypi.org and uh, it has folders full of downloads and some of these are nightly builds. So you might get some of the latest things that aren't on Raspberry Pi Imager, aren't included in the updates but there might be different things of note in, contained in some of those folders. Next up is a Raspberry Pi amplifier, and uh, I had this in the last Pi News, but uh, for some reason I missed it out. But uh, if you have a look through, it's a small hi-fi with a Raspberry Pi in it, and uh, it does look cool. You can see it's got analog connections on the back, and those are speaker terminals on the back as well, Ethernet port, proper power switch with, uh, with a kettle lead as well, so a, a nice thick mains lead. And the inside picture looks great. All sorts of things going on, a lot of work, um, but does look like a really nice finished product. I mean, it, it, it is very, very impressive. Uh, here we go, here's the details. This is my first Raspberry Pi project. Uh, Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, Chinese DAC hat, seven inch 800 by 400 display, class D dual amplifier, four way channel selector, headphone amp kit. So very, very impressive. Next up, Raspberry Pi Zero W turns iPod Classic into Spotify Music Player. Recreating Apple's iconic classic as a Spotify player may seem like sacrilege, but it works surprisingly well. Let's have a look at some of the display. Look at that. My first iPod was the iPod 30 gig video uh, with the scroll wheel, and it was excellent. There was uh, I used to play a Texas Hold'em game on there, and I can't remember what the other game I used to play. There was some, there was another game that was really good on it. For the time, not so much by today's standards. So it's using Raz Spotify. And this looks interesting as well. That guy previously used Raspberry Pi to stream albums around his home. So it looks like uh, you can get a turntable 
going into a Raspberry Pi. I wonder what system, I need to have a look at that and see what system that uses, because I'm looking at, uh, well, I've tried to connect my turntable to my HomePod speakers, but I can only get them working in mono at the moment, and that, that kind of defeats the object. I might as well just plug them through my old amplifier, but if I can get stereo HomePods, I would be really pleased with that. Next up's a crazy one, which is, uh, I turned a Nerf gun into a Call of Duty Warzone controller with a Raspberry Pi. And uh, obviously I'm not going to play the video, but if you have a look at some of the wiring and things. Uh, but it is it is actually working, or we did have it working, I think it stopped working. Um, but, uh, but yeah, just something very, very different for a Pi. There you go, look at all this with all the wires and all the craziness with it. But definitely worth having a read. It's a very short video, but it's worth having a look at. And this one's interesting. I wrote an app to turn a Raspberry Pi into a Wi-Fi enabled input device hub. Hi folks, I thought I'd drop in to share my new code project, NetStick, that turns Raspberry Pi into a Wi-Fi enabled device hub. This allows you to share the connected joysticks, mice and keyboards attached to one Pi with a second Pi running the corresponding server app. I've been using this to connect a set of gamepads attached to my old Pi 3 to my new Pi 4 RetroPie rig without having to drape USB extension cords all over my living room. Once configured, devices behave as they would if they were plugged into the USB on the target device directly and are surprisingly responsive and low latency. It's been immensely helpful for me. Hopefully some of you can find it useful as well. And as you can see from the comments here, so like a wireless USB type of thing, yeah, exactly, wireless USB for input devices. Really interesting and uh, I think I'm gonna have to have a play with that and I'll put a link to it in the description. And the last one was one I heard on the Daily Tech News Show, and uh, this is something that gets Samsung's operating system running on an iPhone. Uh, it's only through a web browser, but uh, I thought it'd be interesting to try and have a look at in a video. So the website is itest.nz, so just type that into your browser. You're supposed to do this on the phone, but I figured as I'm doing Pi News, I thought I'd start it off in Pi News. Uh, and you can see it loads up a website. Uh, so I need to switch over to screen capture now. Okay, so on my iPhone, and I'll, I'll layer it on the top of the screen, I'm pressing the camera button and using the QR code to go to this site. So you can see here, open itest.nz. You are just two taps away. Tap the uh, share icon at the bottom of your screen, scroll down to the pop-up menu till you see add to home screen and hit add. Add to home screen and add. Oh, we've got an icon look, Samsung test. Here we go. You're about to get a little taste of Samsung without changing phones. Next. So next, let's uh, watch out for text messages with hints on the best stuff to check out. There we go. So we now, I'm, I'm scrolling up and scrolling down. This now feels like a Samsung phone, looks like a Samsung phone. Uh, here we go, we've got a notification at the top. Welcome to the other side. Swipe up, down, left and right. See what everything does. Tap on all the apps. Make yourself at home. It's your phone after all. So let's go home, scroll up, yeah, let popular apps. Don't worry, all the apps you love are available because let's be honest, most of them are Google products and we're good buddies with those guys. So what happens if I go to the camera? Oh, it does that. Hi, I'm Logan Dodds, a registered plumber who's made a living filming my adventures. I don't know how much I can play of that. Uh, so gallery themes. Apply. To think this is this is just a website, so there's nothing been installed. Uh, it's just a website. Oh, I don't, I don't ever like that one. Uh, how do I go back? Where was themes? Galaxy themes. Go back. Oh, let's go back to that one. Back to the sort of standard one. Gallery. And this doesn't this doesn't feel slow, considering this is running a website and and sort of emulating a phone in some ways. Uh, I know a lot of the apps aren't going to work. Galaxy wearable. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Galaxy. Oh, hold on. Generic friend. Here we go. What's up? Not much. I've cleared my calendar to try. This is, is weird, isn't it? Settings. Display. Oh, okay, so that's something that doesn't doesn't open up, which, which makes sense. Smart switch. 
game launcher. Here we go, Fortnite, which isn't currently on iOS. That's an interesting take. And I've got a Samsung uh, Galaxy S8, so I'm used to this this menu system. But my main phone is, a, is an iPhone and has been for years. Samsung Health. Oh, and the, even the left, the left swipe works as well. So if I'm on the home screen and I swipe in from the left, I get all the Google cards. Oh, here we go. We've got another message. Check out Themes. It's an app on your home screen. Your phone shouldn't be generic. So Samsung lets you transform the whole design. Try applying one now. Well, I've already done that. I do like the swipe left to get into the Google cards because I, I use that a lot for news and information because it, it uses your Google searches and uh, so shows up things you're interested in. So that's great. Can't find a way of... Oh, they... Uh, here we go. So this is the fake call. So I'm going to answer the call. Hey, it's Sam. We just wanted to give you a quick call to say thanks for checking out the experience. Many iPhone users think Android will be too different to what they're used to, but hopefully you found it intuitive and fun to use. And who knows? Maybe we'll see you on the other side. That's, that's so impressive. Anyway, I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.